Welcome traders. It is Sunday, the 22nd of October. I'm going to keep this one short as well. Please give me some feedback. Um, in other words, uh, it's possible you might just want a very sharp sh uh, or short, sharp recording of my market analysis. And some of you might want a little bit more information behind that. So I'm trying to see if I can find a sort of a happy medium that makes everyone uh, makes everyone else happy. Okay, so very quickly, let's have a look at the economic candidate coming for sort of for the week ahead. There's a lot of news. There is a ton of news here. And basically, Tuesday, for example, not a lot happening on Monday. But Tuesday, there's just a bit of everything. All right, it's all high impact. We've also got, for example, a little bit on uh, on we've got the, the Fed chair Powell speaking on uh, on Wednesday. Um, uh, in the evening. So that's really gonna happen by bedtime if you're in the UK. So we'll have to see what that happens because that liquidity is gonna be low. It's just before the market closes. There could be some weird gapping and spikes there. We'll see if that's gonna be the case possibly. Then we got Thursday and I really think probably most of this will be focused around the US unemployment claims and the ECB press conference really kind of and as well as the monetary policy statement coming out of Europe. I think those are really the big things but there's a lot of um, sort of high level news, high impact news this week. So just be prepared for that. We could have an extremely volatile week. We're gonna to have to see how that goes. And so that being said, of course, as you know, let's go ahead and have a look at the charts. Okay, so uh, for those of you who are new, watching this for the first time, I'm using Pro Real Time, which is in my, to my mind, the best sort of charting platform. There we've got eSignal. There's all these really high level ones, but uh, Pro Real Time for me is, the, uh, is my preferred one because I can change my layouts and do a whole lot of stuff and I find it uh, very cost effective. So let's start by having a look at the VIX, which is the volatility index. And what is worth mentioning here is you can see that we've actually finally started to get out of this range, started to break up to the upside. The implication here is that there's gonna be more volatility. I also think it's worth mentioning on the weekly time frame here that we're above that 50 period moving average. and that and we're also on the MACD starting to dip above zero. So I can't really say what that is going to result in, but what I can tell you is those are significant markers. Those are milestones. It means that the volatility is increasing. However, in the past, if we're going to have a look at it, in the past, we've stayed within this area quite a bit. In fact, over 2023, we sort of were in this area, came down. So what this doesn't mean is it doesn't mean we're going to head all the way up here. That doesn't mean that that's the case, but it does mean we've started to break out of this range and that volatility is now on the rise. Could start to see it head up towards 2025. So what that means is we could start to see some bigger moves in the markets, potentially um, a little bit more choppiness. Okay, if we go ahead and have a look at the dollar index, dollar index didn't really do much over the last of the week. It's still overextended. It is still overextended. It's not a question of whether it is or isn't. It is. Uh, it doesn't need to come down. Yes, it does. Where would be a really good place for it to come back to a very normal place would be for it to actually come back down to 103, which would be the other side of the 50 period moving average. So you can see we've reordered into a stronger dollar, but we are overdue for a retracement and we could do with a 382 um, or a 50% FIB retracement, all of that kind of hints at the potential for it to come back into this area. So this is a great place for it to retrace to. I'd like to see that happen. We are still in a range on the daily and therefore the question is gonna be what is gonna happen within this range over here. So we need to decide if we're gonna break out to the upside or to the downside. We could have an attempt this week to, to try to pierce that. But certainly on this point, look, the monthly, as I have said before, the monthly is good to go. I think that's still got that potential to go up. But it would be very good for the markets if we sort of came back down and tapped, it tapped sort of tapped 104, 103. Would be a much healthier state of mind. Another alternative is for it sort of come back down. Maybe it just taps the top of this level here in the buy zone and then moves off. So we have a look at euro, euro, uh, euro dollar. I've sort of mapped out a potential way for this to go. There's definitely some hints of this attempting to turn around. Doesn't mean it, it's guaranteed, but it is trying to do that. And there's a level here it's attempting to break through as resistance. We've got higher lows coming into this. And we've also got some more bullish price action here. So in isolation, if I look at the daily and I look a little bit at the weekly and I look at the monthly, this looks like a potentially really good place for it to turn around because it would then be stuck within a range. So we've gone from an uptrend into a range that would be the potential here so i'm just going to mark that and sort of highlight where that range is there we go there's our nice little range that was a fail breakout and so this could turn out potentially to be the bottom of that range okay so marking that let's see how that goes now sterling is also desperately trying to turn around i'm just going to mark this little bit over here it's trying to do that and we can see some really nice bullish action there all of this looking good. The weekly is a mess. There's not a lot going on here. You can see very bearish candles start to look more and more bullish. And we're starting to form a little bit of a base here. So there's a bit of a flaw there. I'm just going to mark that in as well. 
as you go. That's a very, very nice one. Okay, let's just put it there and let's see how that goes. Um, and we're coming down to these potential lows over here. So we're, we're in an area where there's a diff there's a number of different ways in which this could play out. We could see price break out straight up from where it is here. We could see a try, fail, come down here, then bullish divergence and then hell off. So basically we've gone from a period where there's been a strong downtrend to a period now where there's either going to be a trend reversal or potentially an accumulation phase where the market is going to ping pong around. And to very quickly jump ahead to show you what that could be when it gets messy, and I don't think it's going to be this messy, but to show you that would be something like natural gas where you could see that there was previously a very strong downtrend and then it started to go sort of sideways and it's had several attempts to break out to the upside and just can't seem to do it. Now, I'm not saying it's going to look this way. I doubt it would be this way, but that's the kind of thing where we can see that shift in sentiment happening. Okay, Aussie dollars as well. So I spoke about two, three weeks ago, I spoke about the Aussie dollar and Kiwi dollar looking a lot stronger. And then we had a really strong comeback from the US dollar, which is pushing it back down. And so now we're starting to effectively, I'm going to remove this for the time being because we've, we've lost that sort of bullish divergence. Now the market has started to produce lower highs coming in. And we're starting to look a little bit more flat. We're starting to look very, very weak here. So when I look at Aussie dollar, US dollar in isolation, this hints at the Aussie dollar going lower in the coming week. Series of lower highs. The bullish divergence has kind of gone away. We've got a sort of equal highs here. This is starting to flatten out here. This is starting to look as though that is going to start to break to the downside if it does, because then we've got that bearish breakthrough. This is looking very weak. We just didn't really we had some strong failures above here exhaustion then we had a, a breakthrough very bearish continuation and a rejection here so although there are some buyers and sellers here there's a lot of pressure to the downside and we are sort of at historical when i say historical we you know we've only been here in 2022 and then prior to that in 2020 so we are starting to test these lows but it is looking not looking strong it's looking weak so let's see how that goes then we get the kiwi dollar which was also looking really really strong and now has lost all of that strength uh, we start to break almost immediately to all these lows uh, and here we're looking this when you look at this it's a downtrend pulls back we get a very nice bearish signal bearish almost almost engulfing and then we get a continuation of that so this implies to me that it's got further downside okay so the two of those now suddenly looking weak from when they were looking like they were the the, the rebels that were pushing back it seems to have uh, evaporated so let's have a look at dolly yet so i've been on holiday so i'm coming back to you here looking at this with relatively fresh eyes uh i don't want to say rested uh but fresh okay so let's look at dolly yen so dolly yen is starting to push to the upside here 150 is still testing that line in the sand for the bank of japan not necessarily where uh, they want it to go it keeps trickling up this is but it is overextended and when you look at it over here you can see it's a bit overextended and it's sitting at a major level and there's some bearish divergence here so some bearish divergence here also hinting at this point that excuse me it's going to have a bit of a correction so it's interesting to me sorry i've got the hiccups now it's interesting to me here that the uh, dollar index is showing some potential exhaustion dollar yen is showing some potential exhaustion but then when i look and i look at euro and gbp they're showing that possibility for turning around then we look at aussie dollar and kiwi dollar and they're looking really really weak so when i sort of masticate on all of that let me be clear i mean chew on all of that masticate um is it kind of tells me that there's a little bit of different things going on it isn't just about the dollar it does appear to me though there is the potential here for the euro and the pound to be a little bit stronger for the dollar to possibly be strong or just giving unclear signals and actually for aussie and kiwi to be weak that could very well be the case here normally i would just say okay it's the dollar the dollar is strong and we're going to push back but this week i think we want to kind of pay this i'm not imagining it there are definite signs of exhaustion in the dollar index there's also signs of exhaustion with uh, uh, signs of strength in the euro and the pound so i think i want to keep that in mind dollar swissy uh for the most part maintaining this sort of bearish move to the downside and here it just looks very much as though it wants to do that very almost steady when you look at a lot of its behavior but it's going to come in to test these levels of support um, so dollar swissy could potentially be looking for pullbacks and looking for shorting opportunities only thing i would mention here is it's now kind of below both the 200 and the 50 period moving averages all right and then we have dollar cad which usually is just doing its own thing and again here it looks really really bullish you can see how it's gone from sort of no clear uh, direction on the weekly finding support look at those nice wicks underneath it quite beautiful breaks up hits here pulls back beautiful bullish candle continuation now you've got the 50 the 20 and the 10 and an uptrend all in play here 
implies that this has got room to move to the upside, which is going to add a little bit of strength to the dollar. So we're seeing here we're getting mixed signals. We are seeing definitely some strength towards the dollar. And when we get to the equities, we're going to see that as well. Um, and so a lot of that is implying that that dollar right now is looking relatively strong. And so that could be the plan for this week is to be prepared for a stronger dollar. All right, moving on to commodities. So commodities here have broken this downtrend. This is a very noteworthy breach of that. So if I just draw that in so you can see it, we've really broken through this series of lower highs, lower lows. If you wanted to draw it in a channel, we've done that. Okay, we have broken through that and we are now on our way back up to these old highs. Why is that important? Well, because when you look at it from a monthly perspective and we zoom out, you can actually see we're potentially producing a, a higher low off that 50 period moving average, which you can see we'd sort of tap in the past, but it's a bullish engulfing candle massive it's a very strong buy so what does this mean it means that the momentum now should be completely relatively unrestrained and i think there's a good chance it's going to work its way back up to that 2000 i'm not even going to say 2000 itself i think 2100 is now uh, on the horizon 2100 for gold okay but how will we take advantage of that as traders how will i do that we need pullbacks this is very very overdue for a pullback a retracement any kind of pullbacks again into that 1940 area would be a really, really good place. Pulling back to 382s, 50 FIBs, 618s, any of those would be, should provide some potentially really good uh, entry opportunities. Then let's have a look at silver so I can include that. Same thing, silver's coming back up into these previous highs. Hasn't broken that downward trend line yet, but look at that monthly. That's a beautiful monthly bullish candle. Again, that means that $25 is straight in its sights. It's got that. Copper, not showing that actually, <clears throat> excuse me, copper looking more and more bearish, but slowing down a little bit. You can see here it's a potentially trying to turn around, um, but also sl definitely slowing down, but has not started to produce a change in trend yet. Okay, natural gas. Spoke about natural gas a little bit here. I've highlighted this little tunnel that it's stuck in. For now, <clears throat> I think it's just worth leaving alone. There's nothing to mention on that until it breaks out of that. Crude. So last week I spoke about really nice bullishness here. There's some of these are sometimes you'll see setups over time that make that are like no brainers but then other times you're not entirely sure. So here I would say in this particular case, I'm gonna adjust this down here. That's really good, that's where it should be. This is a beautiful retest, pull back and a retest within a trend. This is gonna to attempt to connect with this next level up here. So it should work its way back up to these highs this coming week and Brent crude will be doing something similar. But here's where it gets interesting. There is clearly a level of resistance where we are sitting here at 92.25, let's call it that. So we'll see if it's gonna get past that in this area. Um, but the momentum for the most part appears to be bullish and to the upside. Then we have coffee. All right, so coffee, very, very strong move off that. Almost bullish engulfing. Looks really good. I think it is a bullish engulfing. Looks very, very good. So coffee now starting to look more and more bullish. Any kind of pullbacks here should be long opportunities there. We look at wheat. Wheat is attempting to turn around. Look at that very nice bullish uptrend on the MACD. Um, within this downtrend <clears throat> and bullish divergence here. So slowly but surely wheat is trying to turn around. Sugar. Okay, so sugar is kind of maxing out and this could just be something as simple as the economics of it. Literally just the kind of supply and demand. It's battling with that 27 level. What was the high of this? 2767, so quarter 2770, uh, battling with that level a bit. This whole area is very choppy and a level of support in this area. So I would expect it to potentially, potentially, excuse me, ping pong around in this area. But overall, it's obviously quite bullish. Um, over, yeah, it's just very choppy. It's going to have to work its way through that. Uh, we've got cotton taking a big whack, not offering a lot here, really. It's very, very choppy and looks more bearish than bullish. All right, let's move on to the MVPs. This is the global indices and let's talk about this. So this week we started out looking really good. We started looking nice and bullish and by about Friday, we've got this bearish engulfing candle right down at support. So here's kind of my two cents on this and I really want to keep this in mind. Um, we are sitting at a major level where price has turned around in the past. So although this is a bearish engulfing candle, which um, implies bearish momentum. We've also got the MACD sitting below the zero line and we're below the 50 period moving average. All of those in isolation are heavily bearish. That would tick the boxes for it. However, the problem is we're also sitting at a major level of support. And if this week it turns around and closes up higher, we could get a bullish engulfing candle. And that would also change the shape of the monthly. It would change. And if we had that across several markets, it would change, uh, it would change the, um, it would change the, the projection of where the market's going to go. So here's the thing. We also have the possibility of us heading down towards this 50 period moving average and then bouncing. So why am I kind of giving these mixed, mixed sort of opinions? The fact of the matter is that the market 
tend to go up over time, which means that historically, uh, you know, we can expect this market to ultimately return back into a bull market. It's attempted to do that this year already. Now it's kind of wobbling and going back down. It's unusual for a market to go from a bear market to a bull market back to a bear market again. That's kind of, I've not seen that before. Keeping in mind that anything can be happening for the very first time, I think it's more likely that we've gone with that we've had a failed attempt to go into a bull market and we're going back into a range. I'm more inclined to first of all assume that the market is not quite ready to return to a bull market and therefore it stays in a range rather than it's going straight back into a bear market. Um, and so that's going to be my assessment for now. If it goes back into a bear market, I will call it and say it's back in a bear market, but I'm not willing to do that at this time. Also because that we're still at this level where potentially it can recover. The signals look bearish, they could potentially go and do that, but we could also completely reverse the next week. Um, and so because we're at a key level, so it is technically speaking better to wait until you really have committed across the level, broken that level of support, and then go, okay, now let's assess where we are. But currently it is stuck within a range here on a level of support, and therefore I need this week, I need this week to be able to determine what's gonna happen next. Um, we've got the S&P also, let's talk about this. We're coming back down to a level of support on the daily. We are still in an uptrend on the monthly. This is very important guys. We are still in an uptrend on the monthly. So it's weird to say we're going into a bear market when we're still in an uptrend on the monthly. That kind of, that's not really how it works. We still have an upward sloping trend line. And although we do have a downtrend on the weekly and we're now dipping below that 50 period moving average, although things look very bearish, it's probably better to say that this is at the very last patch of a bull market before you'd go into a bear market than saying we're already in a bear market. It's, it's a better way to, because the, and the reason why that's so important is because you then make different decisions. If, you know, I would not short the market at this time because I don't think we're convincingly in a bear market. Um, I might be cautious about buys or be very, you know, I might look at my stock holdings and then look at, you know, maybe I should trim the weaker ones, but, I'm not going to switch gears and start doing it just yet. Okay, so we've got the NASDAQ as well. So the NASDAQ also producing a bearish candle here, also coming back into the moving averages. So let me be clear about one thing. We needed a retracement. We needed a retracement even within a bull market back down to this area. It is now in the area where the NASDAQ can turn around. So if we hadn't seen any of the other charts, excuse me, this is the best place for it to turn, to turn around in. That means that this is a very normal natural retracement in isolation, and therefore the NASDAQ can very much turn around here. Okay, it's really important to emphasize that this can turn around and produce a bullish candle here. And if it does produce a bullish candle here, and a lot of the other markets have managed to stay where they are, then, and I'm going on record as saying this, then we are potentially looking at the next big swing low, of the next big move to the upside. But before we get there, I need to see that bullish candle. Okay, I've got to see a nice, strong green candle in this area. So I'm going to mark this and kind of go, look, that's what I need to see. And so that's, that's either going to happen this month, if that goes green, or it's going to happen next month or the next month after it. And it's going to happen in this area. If, on the other hand, we sort of fell below this level, Okay, because remember, we still, we're still in an uptrend now. Started to fall through this level, even remember down to the 50 period moving average, which is what's something we connect with over time. So in other words, there's a lot more that has to happen, in my opinion, and technically, before I'm willing to say we're in a bear market. Okay, the theme of today's episode would be, let's not panic, let's not panic. Okay, we're not there yet. I know the media is incredibly doom and gloom but the media is never positive. It's never positive. And when you're down here, it's doom and gloom. And when you're here, it's doom and gloom, and they're doom and gloom, and they do. It's always like that. So the media is not an indicator of the state of the market. Russell. So this one I do want to mention because we appear to be breaking out of this range on the Russell, and I think that's significant. So again, I'm happy to say, I mean, as in I'm, I'm professional enough to go, yes, I want to be glass is half full, when it comes to the stock markets, but also I can be realistic enough to say we, we're kind of breaching this level potentially. So I do want to keep an eye on that. Uh, again, the month isn't over yet and a reversal of this can happen. It could be the way that it, that would happen. It would be an attempted breakout and then it would be a failed breakout because it would go and then boost back up. So I'm not willing to call it just yet. 
And it's important to do that. You really do have to hold the line until you know for sure. So again, here we've got this range bound behavior. Okay, it's very, seems to be a very kind of pessimistic type of thing. The beauty of something like this is that you now have that level. You know that when you break and close above that, you're out of that. So that helps you define it. But yeah, bearish engulfing candles across the board. And we started the, by like Wednesday, Thursday, the week was looking, week was looking great. Okay, that's the FTSE. But also let's get some perspective, guys. Let's have some perspective here. We're still near all-time highs. You wouldn't know it. You know, you would just think the whole world is falling apart uh, if that was the case. The DAX. Okay, so the DAX is doing a relatively decent retracement. Um, you know, I've spoke about this. It's quite funny. When would this? So if you go back to somewhere around the 24th of July. So if you watch the episode in this area, I was like, there's definite bearish divergence there. And therefore, we're likely to see a bigger correction here. And we are seeing that bigger correction here. I would say enough time has passed now that if we do correct from here, this has now worked its way out of the system. We are below that 50 period moving average. So if we go back and have a look at this, again, it's, when, it's not really when you're dipping here. We're not there now. We've definitely sort of shifted into this type of behavior. So again, willing to call it that, but we're also sitting again at another major level. So I need to know what's going to happen here first before I make that. So a lot of this, it's always like another week to kind of see what it is. But you really do nothing more crazy than that, that you are right at that very last edge. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to sell my portfolio. And it turns around because there was just an awe if, that, if that's something. And that's not something at all. I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm just saying I understand the thoughts that go through our heads when we do that. Even here, for example, if we went down here and produced exactly the same candle that's here, that would actually be a bullish signal. And that actually means in order to do that, we'd have to go a little bit lower before we turn around. So I'm gonna kind of mark this as another level that you know you can go to before that's the case. Let's switch it up. All right, so we can get that. So I just wanna be, I wanna be clear about how much the market really has to do that stuff before we can go and say it's a bear market. All right. And actually here, there's a very fair chance it could ping pong around and, and do that. Could even come all the way down to sort of 14,000 in this area. And then you get that correction. So if we fib level it so that we can, I'm using this, by the way, as, a, as an example of all kinds of things that could happen around there. So if we do this, we're just coming into the three, two on a retracement. So if we're going to be rational and logical about this, we have to concede that actually it's doing the minimum retracement on the monthly before it continues up. And actually, it can even come down a little bit further, 50% retracement, and then turn around and produce a bullish candle, and there we go. So all of this isn't necessarily a bad thing. <clears throat> I'm going to leave those up so that we can see those. <coughs> Excuse me. ASX also pushing down. So a lot of bearish, heavy, heavy selling. And then I hear a lot about kind of the fear and greed index is at its most fearful or it's very, very fearful. So also mentioning that I am aware that those exist and I want to kind of, let's see what happens with that. Um, so here, yeah, let's keep an eye on this and see what's going to, what's going on in this area. Essex also looking relatively bearish. Uh, and then we get the Nikkei, which is also looking relatively bearish. But again, on that monthly, this is exactly where I wanted it to pull back into, into this area. I'm actually going to put a second one down because that is kind of, I would do it sort of, Something like that is what I would kind of propose. And I would get rid of this one, I think. Okay, and that's kind of a bit of a, a more, a little bit of a fairer assessment of kind of that, that area. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so let's run through the individual equities very quickly and see what's happening here. <clears throat> Downtrend here back into this potential level of support. When you look at it again from a monthly perspective, it's a great area for it to turn around in. So no issues there with uh, Apple. Amazon looking relatively bearish, but it's still a really good place for a turnaround, but even down to about here. So we are sitting, and you can see all of these are sitting and really looking very bearish, like they just want to burst through the floor. Um, but we, I need to see them burst through that before I kind of make that call. And then you kind of look at AT&T. So at and I commented on LinkedIn, AT&T had a really good third quarter earnings report. And there was a very good response to it, but it battled with this level of resistance. And so I said I would include it in this week's analysis as in <clears throat> give it a little bit more attention. It is sitting at historic lows. I say that as these lows to me are historic lows. It's a, I need to use a better expression. I apologize. But we are sitting at lows that it isn't at very often. And I consider them serious lows. And it is trying to turn around. It's generally trying to do that. We're trending a little bit high. We're not bullish yet. Here it's trying to turn around. So I would consider it successful if we mark this as a range. 
if we mark this as our range over here, I would consider it starting to look like it's got some potential, and especially if it gets above the 50 period moving average. So now there's a break above 60, but especially a break above, say, 17, a break and a hold. Then I think we would likely see it start to head back up to 20. So um, if you're following it, then that would be a good place for it to be. Uh, Arc innovation back down to the lows. So again, I'm just going to scrap these because although they were attempts to turn around, they ultimately didn't come to anything. And again, here you can see on that monthly, we're still stuck just in this range over here. It's trying to turn around, isn't there yet. <clears throat> and makes sense from that perspective. Okay, Glencore still within the range. So nothing bad about this, nothing negative, just stuck within the range. Now uh, we got a Tesco. Um, yeah, okay. So here, for example, we've got a lot of failure here. I think again, we're likely to see a deeper correction. Uh, at this point, I think we're possibly going to see a little bit more of a correction just kind of down towards these lows here Potentially which brings it back down towards that area. We're going to see if that's the case It's almost a bit of a double top. All right, we've got some little bit of bearish divergence big failure here And it's another high. It's almost an equal high So it's a little bit of a double top and therefore we can see a bigger correction a little bit more cautious about that I prefer to see a pullback and then a breakout at that point point. and that doesn't look so bad, but I want to see that okay Amex Amex obviously going to head back down to the 50, and it, when it's in this area, we can see a bit of a reversal there, but strong bullish engulfing uh, bar. So I spoke a little bit last week as well about potential rate drops and that the average uh, rate cut after the last rate hike is, is, is it has been seven months. So if that's the case and it is an average, we're not going to see too much. We're not going to see a rate hike anytime soon, which means that the market is going to be under pressure. It's just going to be under pressure. Think of it that way. There's no doubt that a rate cut would see a boost to the market. I want you to think about this. Rate cuts generally produce a bullish market, which means that right now what we're seeing isn't really a reflection of the value necessarily of the stocks, but the conditions around which we would engage in them. So more people are more bullish the second there are rate cuts or the interest rates are lower, therefore there's a bit of a boost. And that could potentially all be, that could be the only thing that is potentially um, preventing the market from heading up higher. Okay, so just think about it from that perspective. It's not necessarily doom and gloom, but just that, you know, it's a culmination of conditions. It's a culmination of economies being relatively nice and healthy, but also rate cuts. And sometimes we've had actually unhealthy economies with lower interest rates. And I want you to remember that as well. What a lot of the countries are trying to do now is to get us used to higher rates and to be healthier so that if we then do need to have rate cuts, we can do that without like without hitting that floor very quickly. So possibly that's just a question of making it a little bit tougher on the markets for now. And it therefore is not a reason to be pessimistic, just a reason to understand that, you know, we're seeing companies take some hits. They're still declaring record profits for the most part. So just kind of take it all with a pinch of salt. Coca-Cola. Look at that. That's a very nice reaction so far off the 50 period moving average. Okay, so it has it could potentially work its way back up to 56. Um, it's trying to turn an uptrend here, but that doesn't mean anything just yet. Uh, I would look and see. I think this is the one you want to watch. So I'm going to mark this again. This is where the beauty of, as I said, trend lines as a general I don't do, but I do like to find them uh, as just kind of this very gentle sloping trend line. I know that once we start to breach that, we're definitely starting to head higher. Okay, so let's do that. Let's look at BP. BP is the same as crude oil, so that will probably work its way through the top. We'll see. It's the battle between the demand of the commodity, but also the company performance stuff. We'll see. Same for ExxonMobil. General Motors, excuse me again. So General Motors, similar to, what was it, one or the other, that had started to break through the low of this area back into this, sort of back into the next um, batch below here. JP Morgan Chase, battling, but still good. Still in an uptrend on the monthly. That's not bad. So again, it's not anywhere dire right now. Not worried about that. Performing well. Adidas is still holding up relatively okay. Was a move higher and a bit of a failure, a bit of a bit of a failure there, but we'll see. It's got to break below that before I would be concerned. Uh, we got Meta, which is double topping. Let's call it what it is. Some bearish divergence there. Again, we could see a bit of a deeper reaction correction down towards these lows. So that is a possibility if we get that back down at least towards these lows. I'll leave, uh, whoops, I'm going to leave that there, get rid of that, oh, that was me, um, give me a second here, uh-huh, 
Sorry, just got uh, took a just chatting there quickly. So, and again, I stand by the fact that I'd love to see Facebook uh, back down there at 250. I think it's really good for it. Uh, Morgan Stanley, take a little bit of a hit, but let's mark this, please. Let's mark this one here and put this in. Actually, I would, mm, I want to say at that level where it is now. And also it's tapping that 50 period moving average. So let's have a look and see where, where that goes. We've got a video we know needs a correction. It's starting it, look at that. And I marked it now. I actually took the time to draw out a head and shoulders. So this is a possible head and shoulders. Remember that head and shoulders tend to have about an 83 success rate, which means that there's a very fair possibility that if I just kind of draw from there to the neckline or just measure it down towards the neckline, let's just do it in approximately like that, and then just move it, that we've got a possibility we're going to see this. Come on, man, don't be difficult. You are kidding me. Then we're going to see neckline. Okay, there we go. Boop. Okay, so again, that's down to that 50 period moving average, and that brings us down towards 300 or 320 in that area, which is what I've always been talking about. This area 336, I actually would like to see it back down. But yeah, that's a possibility, guys. So let's see what happens with that. I would want to see NVIDIA do that correction. And that could be all part of... So when I say now that the markets look like they might want to test those levels, maybe that's what's going to happen. They are going to break, do one more drop. We'll see that, and then we'll see the recovery. Uh, wow, bullish and golfing car on Netflix. Good on you, but look at that beautiful break and a retest. It's not above the 50 period moving average as well. All those things are just additional accumulative bits of information that happen. We're not there yet, but that is a good potential level of support. That would be very good. Um, I feel bad because I feel like I don't watch enough Netflix these days. They've still got some good shows, but I watch a bit of Prime and a bit of Disney, a bit of Apple. And actually, I really feel like Dis um, Netflix is continuing to just pump up the content. Okay, so this looking heavily bearish. PayPal, you guys, I don't know what to say, man. I've always been rooting for you, but downward pressure right there there's basically continuation to the downside sorry no sign of turning around just yet we've got spotify which actually is this is a worth marking worth marking this when you see an area you're like there's just it's failing it just cannot get past that you want to kind of mark that because the next time you get a solid breakthrough that just that single break is usually enough to say okay we're going up um we're going to go up from here so that would be worthwhile and then i would do another one up here because that's going to be a big one so those are your okay those are your uh biggest challenges if you do that in that area where did I? I had it somewhere else I had it kind of there um, those are your big big challenges so over here it's a mess it's basically ping ponging around so let's leave that there's your range over there so I'm gonna leave it but it's not collapsing like PayPal is uh, we've got the spider as well very much moving down towards 64 some heavy selling on that one as well so what you could also be seeing here because you know there've been concerns about the inverted bond yields and all different kinds of things uh, happening as well with treasuries and all kinds of uh, concerns about that we could be seeing just an unwinding of those positions we also know that china unwound a few um it also holds some of that uh, some of the markets so in terms of cash positions so we could see some unwinding there and therefore we could see a bit of that um again historically i've been doing this for a very long time and i'm very loath to call it a panic just because again we we just went through 2023 we went through stuff last year so okay so fedex uh coming back down to this upward sloping trend line there we go potential area for it to turn around and we're gonna have to see if that's gonna be the case it's got a strong uptrend here broken through that high yeah could it be a lower high could we be seeing a bigger head and shoulders too soon to tell but you know i'll mention that we'll keep that in mind is what i'm saying if that's going to be the case over there let's go to tesla so tesla something significant has happened okay i would say something is significant it's fair to say that it's happened we've breached that lower upward sloping trend line we've produced a lower high lower low so we're in a con sort of confirmed downtrend but we again we're sitting at a level that was resistance here so look at the tap there then another tap there and then a move through and a tap and another tap so this week we could see a push higher um, but we have started to breach that uh, if I try and adjust it using this, you know, I mean, now I feel like I'm just giving them extra room, still manages to breach that. And I think it's fair to say that we can remove this and then we just have to see if this level of support holds. But if you believe that trend lines are everything, then you're going to, it doesn't matter the kind of the thing has been broken. And I do know the 50, uh, look at, we had price sort of dip below the 50 here, then touch the 50 there, then potentially touch the 50 there. So we could still see a bit of a bounce from it. I think more importantly, I would say that it really only matters when we start to breach through this, if we're starting to head higher. I know that um, Elon Musk produced, you know, there was a transcript of all the things he said, which basically sounded like, you know, uh, how difficult some of the environment is right now for him. Um, and uh, anyway, so there was some of that. So, you know, there's the outlook coming from 
and again, I'm personally not a fan of Musk's like behavior sometimes, but I like elect I like EV products and I love the fact that Tesla, they've got some good products. So, well, I hear concerns about the quality of the vehicles, which is a big, big thing. And the pricing coming down, I think is a good thing. That's a good thing. We need those to be more effective, but there's a whole lot going on in the EV market anyway. So I'm just trying to separate what's going on in the EV market versus what's going on with Tesla as a stock versus what's going on with the manager who's a different, like there's a whole lot of different things that I'm trying to kind of be objective about all the different things here. So my point being that, uh, let's just see how this goes because it could potentially turn on. We'll see if that's going to be the case. We've got Vanguard, um, which is coming back down to these lows here again. So very interesting where, where they've done that with a very nice uptrend. So again, this is a really good area for it to potentially turn around. Walt Disney, I spoke about this last week. So this is definitely an attempt to turn around. This is very similar to, again, what I spoke about with natural gas. It's trying to turn around. We've got an upward sloping line here. It hasn't managed to get through that. So this is your range. So when you hear people talk about an accumulation phase of a stock, this would be that. This would be what you're looking at now would be the beginning of an accumulation phase uh, for Disney. And so I'm going to mark it now so we can see it. So once we start to break out of that, that would be then be the potential for the market to start climbing, climbing higher. So you can learn in real time about what accumulation phases are and what they do. Okay, so now we can start to talk a little bit about, because we're almost done, one or two more minutes. We can see we've got a bit of a potential turnaround here, a little bit of bullish divergence. So that would imply we're going to see a bit of a, a move up in terms of that in bonds. And almost certainly when you have a very bearish bear market, you see a bit of growth in bonds. Here we've got some strong signs of that where we look at the Eurobund. We've got testing that level of support. We've got a bit of bullish divergence. It's trying to turn around. Excuse me. Let's try and turn around. That's going to be a level of resistance. And now we're going to have to see. So if we start to see, so this is what I would say for the people who are worried about and want to panic. If we start to see a big shoot up in terms of bonds, as well as potentially the uh, volatility index also both spiking, that could potentially, that would then be seen possibly as a bit of fear, kind of that would be a bit of a movement in terms of towards safety. Um, and I say that because bonds are reportedly safer than, uh, than stocks. So let's do that. Finally, let's wrap up on Crypto, so you can see Bitcoin again. This is different. So something has changed when it comes to cryptos. We're seeing a lot of kind of a bit of dire situation and cryptos are kind of doing a bit of a move. And this is something we've, I've only seen once uh, this year other than and not so much in previous years where it was a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, we saw Bitcoin climb when everything else was dropping. And I find that very interesting, but it is still in this range. It only really counts once we break out to the upside, but it does look as though it's getting ready to do that. So that would be interesting to me if we're going to see cryptos uh, start to climb a bit. Just mentioning here on Ethereum, we've got bullish divergence and a bit of a double bottom. So also starting to look potentially bullish on uh, that. Let's have a quick look at Solarium. Also big move, break out to the upside. Tiny, tiny, tiny little things here, but we are seeing movement is the best way to describe it on cryptos. And it's too premature to say, oh, this is it. This is the next like bubble. It's no. You can't really do that because all the bubbles we've had in the past have happened when there's been a boost in stock, in tech stock, in the Nasdaq, and everywhere else across the board. I, I would be I would be surprised if suddenly cryptos climbed and everything else on the planet kind of tanked. Doesn't really make sense to me. What I am seeing though is, is it's interesting to me. It's, they're not they're not um, irrelevant. They are showing some growth and movement, and Binance as well trying to turn around. That's it. So, ladies and gentlemen, to recap. Uh, we are, this week is important because yes, we could still turn where we are. I think it's probably a 60, 40. I think there's a 60% chance we could see the market break to, to in some areas, not across the board necessarily, but in some areas to go down to test those next few levels and that we might still be in for maybe possibly a couple more weeks of pain. Having said that, um, there's also that if we do turn around where we are now, and we, I think then we could potentially be setting ourselves up for the, for the, for the swing low of the next bull run. Um, so this week, I want to be prepared for both equally. Be prepared for it to NVIDIA and a few of those other ones that still look like a Microsoft, oh, not Microsoft, uh, Meta, and a few of those that look like they really could still do with another bit of correction. They sort of imply to me that we're not going to immediately revert back into a bull market just yet. We could tread water, go sideways for a bit, um, and that could happen. So you can have a few that don't drop lower while other things do, and we just kind of muddle our way through it. Um, but let's, and so I just want to be prepared for that this week as well. Okay. And again, when I look at the currencies, there's those mixed results. We can see gold now starting to climb and we can see currencies. Um, there could be some potential for euro dollars. So just 
be prepared that we're at a part where the market is is still trying to decide if this is where it's going to turn around or not and just be prepared for that. It can be frustrating, but it's worthwhile. And again, I stand by my assessment that that dollar index does need a deeper correction. It could just keep going from here, but it has already reached the point where a correction is overdue and that it could we could see a couple of weeks of that happening. And a couple of weeks of that lined up with stronger stocks could be a good thing. There's just, and it isn't always clear at those points where it turns. You have to see a little bit more evidence to know which way it's going to go. But when it starts happening, we'll know, because then all of a sudden I'll start saying there's lots of bullish signs everywhere. Okay, I'll leave you with that. And uh, also let me know if you're okay with this format. Uh, any feedback, good or bad, does help me a lot. But thank you and uh, have a great, have a great week. All right. Oh, and also subscribe. Subscribe, please. All right. Like and subscribe for me. Do me that kindness. Okay. What are you waiting for? <laughs> so thank you.